We're going to start out with the S. The S is for support because it takes a whole village to raise just one child. Don't think you can do it alone. There's people out there. Ask for that positive help. Your M is for motivate. Don't hate. Motivate. Tap into your child or your inner smile. And that's what you love doing so much. You would do it even if you did not get paid. That's your gift to the world. That is what you use to leave this place better. Now your I is invest. Invest. Giving back with that talent, your gift to leave this place better. So you serve, you serve. That's what your knowledge is for. And then love, oh my goodness, love. The smallest word in smile, but the most powerful. And I'm talking about agape. I'm talking about unconditional love. I'm talking about loving the unlovable. That is a commandment. And without the love, smile wouldn't be. You wouldn't even be able to share a positive gift. And then E, your E, educate. Knowledge is power. And like Frederick Douglass said, not knowledge is power, right? And then knowledge is strength and only the strong survive. I like the word version, train up a child and the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. You can't get a brain transplant. It has to last a lifetime. So take care of it. You get a new car every five years, right? You can get a lung transplant, a heart transplant, new legs, new eyes, but your brain, once it's gone, is gone. Your body can be paralyzed. Your brain living, you're still considered alive. So take care of it. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to educate you today, and we're going back to... Hi there, and welcome. I hope you're smiling after that, because I am, because I have a jazz vocalist Phyllis Causey, and I was just looking at her CD here, and she has one of my favorite pieces. Maybe the next show she could sing it. It is All in Love is Fair by Stevie Wonder, 1973. There's other one, um, Porgy, Do Nothing. Oh, we're going to talk to her. And if you're not smiling already because of the intro, you're going to be smiling after this show with Phyllis Causey, jazz vocalist, and guess what? An author. Not just one book, several books. But I'll let you see and hear what she has to say. She is truly smiling, and we'll talk about how we met, too. She's my angel. Welcome. Hi. How are you, Jess? I'm doing good, and I'm just so happy that you agreed to be on. And this will play during Women's History Month here in 216, and it's great to have you as one of my first guests for 2016, representing positive women. I'm honored. I am honored to be here today and, and especially because of that, because of the Black History Month and, and the women we celebrate. You exactly, know. exactly. So, so very important, yeah. Yes. So basically the question I ask usually everyone is, what is it that you love doing so much that you would do it even if you did not get paid? Well, of course we know singing is is uh, on the top. I always wanted to sing as a kid. I, I always wanted to sing and uh, act. I wanted to be involved in, in acting and entertaining people. But I didn't have the courage to do it mm -hmm. for a long time. And if, if anybody ever tells you, you can't sing, which my brother told me jokingly once. But he was joking and, and it, it had such a profound effect on me that I stopped singing for years. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sing because I didn't know if I if I really could Wow yeah so but I love to sing and, and it wasn't until um, after sometime my kids had grown up and I decided I'm gonna do it I'm gonna go sing and uh, I met a man who was a musician and he said well you know he, he took me under his wing and he taught me how to sing a song how to learn a song oh wow that's so important. You, you, you know, how do you sing? Because a lot of people want to sing. A mm -hmm. lot of people want to sing. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get started. Mm -hmm. And so that he was my angel because okay. he came and he, and he told me to buy the music, learn the lyrics, because every song has a story. And if we don't tell the story as a vocalist, that's our job is to tell the story. If we don't tell the story, then we're cheating 
everybody. You know, you know what? Let me tell you something, people. We're, yes. Let me tell you something. The words that you plant in a child's mind, oh my goodness, how important that is to have positive. See what she just said? They said she couldn't sing and she wanted to sing. And instead of encouraging her, it knocked her for a loop. Mm -hmm. I met her at Barbara Morrison's. I'm taking lessons with Barbara Morrison. And this angel was there. And I'm up there howling on the stage. She doesn't <laughs> have to say anything. Howling, because what was in my head didn't come out. And she would hug me and embrace me and say, you can do this. And now I know she probably thought back on when she first started. Mm -hmm. And I love to sing. But like Bubba, can I hold a note? No, Bubba can sing. Bubba can sing. You know, mm -hmm. her, no. And when they get up before me, I go, oh my goodness. I'm intimidated, but I want to be like them. And that encouragement, oh, I'm about to cry now. That is it. Yes, you can, you can sing. You can sing. And you, you know, a lot of times people will, uh, I did a workshop uh -huh. of, with women who had never performed before. Yes. They were, they would, some of them would sing at home. Some of them didn't even have the courage to sing at home. Right. So they came to my workshop and That's me. the first thing I said to them is find, it, pick a song that you like, one song, and we're going to learn that song. So um, it doesn't, sometimes we don't understand we can change change the range of the song. Exactly, finding that out with Barbara yes. Morrison. So we might not be able to sing it in Whitney Houston's range, but we can change the song to another key, ah. and then we can put what, to where it's comfortable for us, you know, and so that's, a, that's very, very important. Um, uh, Louis Armstrong, and I oh always use goodness. him because he didn't have a great voice, so to speak, but his talent, of course, we all know was, was outstanding. He played the horn, but his voice was a beautiful voice. So when we think we can't sing or we, it's just who, who's listening? What are we really telling? When he sang that, what a wonderful world. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we exactly. all know that song. Exactly, exactly. And each and every person has a smile and mm -hmm. each and every person is individual. And I have to quit beating myself up. Mine is, fly me to the moon. I'll that's, sing that all day. But that's beautiful. All day. That's all beautiful. day. I'll yeah. sing that every day. And I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to sing that one song until I perfect it. But Barbara Morrison has us learning, what, one song a week? One or two. Last sometimes. time it was three songs yeah. that we yeah. had to come back prepare for. This one is Dinah Washington, Ring My Bell or something. Yeah, uh, if, if I Were a Bell. If I Were a Bell. I'm going to yeah. do If I Were a Bell, Dinah Washington yeah. next week. But all the songs, Gingy, and all of these songs that I didn't know, yeah. so beautiful. But there's so many songs. And, and so it's um, if we want to do it, sometimes a song will come to you, mm -hmm. a song that you like that you may not even remember that you know, and it'll come to you. And then you have to perform that song. It, it won't let you stop until you do it. That's, mm -hmm. that's the vocalist in you. Yeah, so mine, Unforgettable. Yeah. Ooh, Bubba may do that one with me. He has a voice. Mm -hmm. But Unforgettable, I want to do um, Smile, the medley by um, Barbara Morrison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I make someone happy smile and then make someone happy. Mm -hmm. I want to perfect Fly Me to the Moon. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm starting Willow. Willow Weep for me. I'm starting to like that one. Yeah. Willow Weep for me, Etta James version. Yeah. You, you, just, uh, you just get that music. And, you know, this is what he taught me. Get the, buy the sheet music. Because I got it from her, the sheet music. And then with the lyrics, you put the, you know, because it's very important to learn the lyrics. But the the, what about the melody? Somebody said learn the melody. Well, you, you learn the melody. What, in, my, in my vocal workshop, I would have them recite the lyrics. Okay, got it. Because to me, when a composer, when somebody writes a song, they have a story that they're, they're telling. They have a story that they're trying to get across. If they're singing to someone, I love you. And, uh, and so our job is to, is to tell that story for them. And so we learn the lyrics and we learn the music, how they want us to sing it, okay? So, um, so it's very important to do that because if you know the story of the song, then you don't have to try to do a lot of, you know, 
uh, a lot embellishments of embellishments and yes, all of that. Yes, yes, you yeah. don't have to do that. You just sing the song just Got to you. just tell the Got story. You. So your support system in this, I know you had some negative, don't mention their names, yeah. but the positive support system, who was that that really pushed you along? Like you said, a mentor that took you under, and then who else? Yes, and then and then there have been uh, quite, quite a few. Um, Barbara Morrison is one of my idols. Uh, I love her. I was I've just loved blown her away for years. taking a class now for the last over a month now. It's I, just I am flattered too to be in to be in her class. I bought her a CD. I've seen her over the years. She's in different places. I would follow her, and uh, and she's very gracious. And one time we were at uh, Loyola uh, Marymount, and she was doing a show there, and I was in the audience, and she and all of a sudden she says. Where is Phyllis? Is Phyllis still here? And so, and she called me up to sing. That is, she, she is just so, she's so, so, as a matter of fact, um, Barbara Morrison is having a jazz workshop all the month of April. Mm -hmm. And she's featuring singers like Phyllis Cosby, mm -hmm. um, another one in our class, Pat, Almeida, all of the students. <laughs> and if I learn my songs, I may be singing them. <laughs> <laughs> Pray, of course she will, but yeah. uh, all of April, she's going to feature. Nolan Shaheed will be there on April second, I believe. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to have somebody doing Sarah Vaughn. Mm -hmm. um, We're portraying. I don't know who I'm going to. All portray. different. All different of the greats. Yeah. They're going to portray. I think I'm going to do. Um, Nipsey Russell, probably, uh. or <laughs> Jimmy Durandy. <laughs> did, you know? did, did you ever see her um, her play, the Dinah Washington, I Want to Sing? Oh, my did goodness. You seen that? I didn't see that, but I know that ran, so I want to see that. But Dinah yeah. Washington, what we're doing next week. So, so, so Barbara Morrison and your other mentor, did you play an instrument? Did your parents... Um, my parents were not musical at all. Okay. My, 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 none of my people were. My, my brother uh, w went to school with Stevie Wonder. Oh my goodness. Yes, and so and, and he wanted to play drums. And so Stevie would come by, you know, but, but, he, but I wasn't singing back then, but he loved my voice. Uh -huh. And he would always want me to come out and say hi, you know, and so our birthday is the same day. May 13th. Yes, May 13th. So, uh, so I, I, we were in touch for a while, but I wasn't singing, so it wasn't something that he could really help me with. Mm -hmm. Until you you really decide that that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I, I learned it when I was in the Wiz, when I was in the Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. as a kid in elementary school. We had a production of the Wizard of Oz, and I really wanted to be Dorothy, but I wasn't <laughs> big enough, so I had to be a Munchkin. So, <laughs> but as a Munchkin, I learned all of the songs in the in the play. I learned everything, and and it was really really. Um, an experience for me that told me in my mind, this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so that stayed in my mind. So I've, I've been writing and doing a lot of, uh, a lot of things. And then in 1994, I had a brain tumor. And, uh, and so they removed it. And I'm very blessed, you know what I mean? Because it didn't, it was in a place where it didn't affect my motor skills. And, uh, but but what it did, it changed me because then I said, I'm going to live. It's time for me to live because you don't hear a lot of great stories about brain tumors. People don't always survive it. Wow. So I moved uh, back here to California. I had lived out here. And my kids grew up out here. Mm -hmm. So I moved back here. I got in a workshop mm -hmm. at, at the World Stage, and I met some mm -hmm. great people along the way, and, and uh, that really encouraged me to, to start singing. And I did my first show because they, um, for that workshop, they had a show where we would appear and we would support one another. Wow. You know, that is so awesome. And I hope you're listening to this. Live your life. Live your passion. You are born to smile. That's yes. it. I yes. call myself the smile lady because I realize that everybody born is meant to smile. There is no way you are created to leave this place worse. That's right. You are created to leave this place better. When somebody meets you, they should say, wow, my life is better because I met her. Yes. That's the thing. I don't yes. invite anybody on unless they make me smile. Truly. Yes. Truly. Yes. I tell them, look, either I want you on my show or can you come speak to the kids? Look, you even wrote this book here. You're smiling all over the place. Yeah. Um, so uh, your motivation, I, I heard your motivation on how you got to sing, but here you have your grandchildren. How many grandchildren you say you have? 
I, now I have uh, 16. And see, I'll go 13. I think on May 13th, your birthday. Yes. That's what I'm praying about. <laughs> May 13th, I'll have my 13th grandchild. But um, caring for black hair, a home hair care guide, Phyllis Cosby, M-E-D. Right. So you started going to school, and now you wrote this regarding split ends. and I, I did hair for like 25 or 30 years. I had a beauty salon for okay. Hair by Phyllis. And the biggest thing I saw was that many times when you come to the salon and you go home, you don't know how to take care of your hair at home. So I still think you should always have professional care. I don't, I don't, I don't this is no substitute for that. Right. But at home, you need to know how to take care of your hair too. Right. So if you have a relaxer, or you have any chemicals, or you have just, you know, just knowing what to do for your hair at home. And so that, that was my inspiration for writing that. Now uh, this, that my daughter, um, Tiffany, she's a celebrity stylist and she travels all over. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, she'll be out here in March and you'll probably get to, to meet her. But okay. this will be something that she could probably do also. I love it. Yeah, this. it's just simple stuff. It's like, you know, talk to, talking to you about conditioners, shampoos, what do they do, what kind of, you know, it doesn't go into uh, products. Oh, so this is 2009. So yeah. And your middle name is, I have Alina Marie. Yes. So you're, I named mine after T. Phyllis Marie. Marie and yeah, my Phyllis mother Marie. would always say, Phyllis Marie. And I, I call my daughter trauma. Alina Marie, Alina yeah. Marie. <laughs> so you, um, now investing, giving back to the community, mm -hmm. using your gifts, your smile, I call it. How do you give back to the community, paying it forward? I teach um, and I motivate people for a lot of times people feel comfortable coming to me, talking to me, you know, and I think um, because I've lived a long time and seen a lot of stuff and because of my own experiences, I know how devastating it could be when you have those doubts about yourself. And I think we all may have them at some time, um, but we have to overcome them. So when I see somebody, um, like you know, me struggling with Barbara Morris, <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, you she just you went up that. there like, Oh, baby, you need a mentor. Uh -uh. No, no, really, really, you did it in such a sweet way. It, you know, that, that makes me come back even more and more. I just, I just think because if you love to sing or you love something. And you saw how much I loved you should it. Do it. Yes, you, lo <laughs> you love it. And, yes. and I, so I love it, too. Mm -hmm. And and when you when you have that that kind of passion, mm -hmm. you know, you can't let people you can't because there there are times when people say, well, I got to get good, I got to get perfect. That's what I say. You can't. Ha you may never have a perfect performance. You have to learn to live with yourself beyond that. I did a show once. Uh, one of my friends videotaped it. It was so horrible to me, and I just wanted to die. I didn't want to. I said, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never. I was talking really bad to myself. And she said, let me come over and, and talk to you, you know, because it's not that Just bad. Just like you said. When we're looking at ourselves, we're very critical of ourselves, you know. Uh, I don't like my voice when I hear it, and I didn't, you know. And so, um, so she would talk to me. But what I learned over the years is don't take yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. Just get up and have fun, right. you know. Sing, learn a song, though. Don't make everybody listen to you not singing the song correctly. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So it's about your audience, too. Yeah, respect them. Respect them. Respect the person who wrote the song. And, you know, right. sing right. the song. I have a, an original song, and I, I want to hear somebody sing it, but I don't want to hear them jack it up. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. So respect, the, uh, respect the, uh, the composer and learn the song. And then don't worry about um, doing all those runs and all those. Just tell the story of the song. So what I do is I, t I teach. I I've been teaching computer applications because I love, I taught vocational ed because I love it when people want to learn something different, to make more money in their life, to be able to be more marketable, to go out and, and get a decent job to take care of their families or, or start a business. And so I did computer, app, um, I've been a computer person for years, you know, but um, but I teach computer application, how to use Word. Of course, nowadays we have the texting, so, you know, they don't, our kids don't really learn how to write a letter or to format a memo or something like that. But if they work in the corporate world, they're still going to have to know how to do those things. Mm -hmm. Use Excel or PowerPoint. Do you know that that's one of the GEs now, um, computer? 
information systems when you go take that five unit course it is worth it yeah and i took it and it helped me through working getting my masters now working on towards my doctorate mm -hmm. you need to know the computer because your syllabus you write your thesis and your dissertation it's all online now nothing paper That's right. now we just slipped to education yes your <laughs> educational background yeah um, well um, my bachelor's is in uh, business administration and information systems management. So um, I could write databases, and I've done that in a private in my private company called the Computer Tutor, and uh, and I would work with small businesses to help them become computerized. So whether it was installing, uh, finding software for them, uh, and installing, and then training them on it so they could learn how to use it. Um, then I started teaching at uh, vocational education centers. But anyway, then I went back to school, mm -hmm. and um, and I've completed my master's in uh, instructional technology, and um, and then I started my doctorate in education. Mm -hmm. I still have to. I still have uh, four classes. Four classes left mm -hmm. to uh, to finish that. Um, but it's it's been a little while. But what I find in all of that is learning our history, you know, because in my doctorate, we focused a lot on, I went to Texas Southern. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's a historically black college university. Mm -hmm. Now, wh what I liked about that was because as a black person, I, we got a chance to discuss our history and our issues, mm -hmm. okay? And whereas at Wayne State, where my, where my master's and my undergrad degree was, it's more diverse. Mm -hmm. And so they don't focus so much on that. But mm -hmm. I learned so much about how the schools, uh, at first, we were not allowed to learn anything except sewing or something like that. Exactly. But we can, yeah, so we need to know where we come from, you know, and how we've progressed. And yet, uh, there's still so many of our kids that just really don't take an interest in We got to pick that school. ball up and quit allowing the dominant culture to control our children right. because they're not going to teach them the truth. And with that little pause here, I just got a text from um, the president of the Altadena NAACP, one of the youngest, Nicole Ford, and she is at the NAACP Image Awards right now. Uh -huh. But right now she's talking about seeking, they're having a, at the Altadena branch, seeking asylum, black lives, escaping American tyranny documentary and discussion. I want you to note this. It's on a Thursday, February 25th, 6 o'clock p.m. I pray this is aired so you can go ahead and if not, seeking asylum. Mm -hmm. And the um, person that will be speaking is Dr. Melina Abdullah. I love technology for this purpose. Mm -hmm. They just sent this to me and saying we need to be do that. And also, we have a Black History Museum at the United Economic Development Fund. Mm -hmm. And there you will see Olden Denham. He's, he works there with the TV production. Mm -hmm. You'll see Hazik Muhammad, who's a head of the Black History Museum there. Wow. In Altadena, Lake and Altadena Drive. And the founders is Dr. Lady Safala and Dr. Uh, Jamie oh, Muhammad. Come down, you gotta get out and you have to educate yourself. A lot of times, your kids say they don't wanna do it, but you'll let them go do something else. Back in the day, you gonna do this. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Like Bubba say, we right. do this. You gonna do this. Mm -hmm. You have to take control back of your children. They don't mm -hmm. wanna eat spinach all the time, mm -hmm. but you know spinach is good for them. Mm -hmm. We have let our children down, letting them control us. Mm -hmm. So, with that education, I'm loving this. You may have to come back for a part two. Yeah. I want you to look in your camera and give some words of wisdom, what you want to say to um, the youth, anybody right now. What I want to tell you is believe in yourself. Believe that you know what you, what's good for you. Don't let people tell you that you can't do it because you can. You can do it if you just believe that you can. Right. And I would say this if you're not working your purpose what is your purpose mm -hmm. think about that mm -hmm. and young people if you don't want to get old the only way you're not going to get old is die young i know that sounds harsh and for those of you out there hating 
Let me tell you this. Holding on to anger and resentment is like you taking the poison hoping the other person dies. Now that's crazy. So I want you to share your smile. That's what you're here for. I want you to listen to whatever. I have a few. I want you to go to my website, smilelady.org. She is on, what is your, to hear you sing? Um, on oh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud? Okay. Yes, on so SoundCloud. just look up Phyllis. Yeah, just look up Phyllis on SoundCloud. Right. You can hear So my, if they say music. technology, you could Google Smile Lady, mm -hmm. Phyllis. We're friends now on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and we're definitely friends at Barbara Morrison. Most definitely. You got to come out on a Wednesday, Barbara Morrison. I just love her. She is. To 11. Really oh my gosh. That lady is so inspirational with her diabetes um, story, with oh. her performance story, the way she coaches. Barbara Morrison is an absolute genius. Google it. Go down there. She's on Degnan and Lamert Park. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesdays, I'll be there. Wait a minute. It was my first day of class. Stormy. You needed a boat. I called up and said, you still having class? And they said, of course. <laughs> Okay, I drove yeah. down there and that's it. Yeah. So we're gonna leave out on sunshine, which is Mandra. Spread a little sunshine and your smile. And she will definitely be back for part two, along with the rest of my classmates. Yeah. So forgive me, and I didn't use my cold as an excuse yesterday, <laughs> did I? No. No, I said, no, it did. probably sounds better with the cold. Woo! <laughs>